Hello everyone and welcome to Golden Artist Colors. I'm Kevin Greeland and today we're going to be taking a look at our 37 new high flow colors. So we have a color chart that shows you our existing high flow colors and the new colors. If we'll switch to the other color chart, there are the new high flow colors, 37 of those. So we're going to group those loosely and I'm going to go over uh, the line of high flow. So if you're not familiar with uh, high flow, uh, it comes in a bottle that uh, looks like this. It has an applicator point at the top. Um, and of course, the signature bars are always on there. It gives you an idea of transparency and opacity. Um, so high flow is versatile. Um, it's great for doing things like underpainting. You can use it in refillable markers and pens. So calligraphy artists love it. Um, you can use it for staining. Here we've stained a wood veneer. And you can also use it for water media effects. Uh, here we used it kind of like a watercolor. The big difference is um, that watercolor lifts when reactivated with water. Acrylics do not, so they'll be dry completely and you won't be able to activate them. And then, of course, fabric application. So that is our high flow. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at the difference in viscosity. And what makes high flow great is using it for airbrush as well. So we have here a little airbrush sample using a lot of those new colors. All right, so high flow is kind of like an acrylic ink. It's very um, um, watery kind of or thin. So let's do a comparison and I'll show you on this board. I've already done it dry, so we'll do it wet. I'm going to put out our fluid. This is our Thalo Blue Red Shade fluid. And then right next to it, I'm going to put out the new Thalo Blue Red Shade, and this is in the high flow format. And just to compare the viscosity there, I'm going to tilt this up a little bit, and you can kind of see the difference in the high flow versus the fluid. So you can see that high flow, very ink light, immediately runs to the bottom where the fluid is a little bit thicker. So high flow, great as an acrylic ink or using it for airbrush. And as I said, we have those 37 new colors. So we're going to look first at uh, a group of colors we're calling our light value colors. So those are our light value colors. I'm going to do a little brush out of a few of those. Um, this is the light ultramarine blue. We'll do a little brush out. And if you have questions, we have material application specialists that are available to answer those questions. You can email us too or give us a ring. Um, so here I have the dry phthalo blue, I mean, excuse me, light ultramarine blue, and I brushed out the wet. Let's do the light magenta. I'll brush that one out. And all of these have different um, coverage. Some are more transparent, some are more opaque. The light value colors are uh, a lot more opaque. And uh, one more, maybe the napful pink. The other thing I want to point out with the high flow is there's a little bead inside the container, and so you do have to shake them and activate that little bead. So this is the naphthal pink. And again, you can um, use these in airbrush as well as the dippable pens and refillable markers. And maybe the, we'll do the light phthalo green. This is another one of the new colors.
I'm going to brush that one out. Again, a little bit of a color shift from wet to dry. As I said, the light value colors are a lot more opaque. So those are the light value colors. And we have a total of nine of those. Now, my favorite are going to be the iridescent colors and the interference colors. And we have three iridescent colors and two interference colors that we're launching. So here are the iridescents. We have the uh, iridescent bright gold, which happens to be this one. We have the bronze, iridescent bronze. And we have the iridescent gold deep. Um, as you saw earlier in my calligraphy example, um, they're great for refillable pens and markers. Um, yep. Sorry about that. Here we have, <laughs> um, for our calligraphy artists, our iridescent. Um, and these are great for the um, refillable markers or dip pens or refillable pens. So let's do a brush out of those. So here we have the iridescent bright gold. I'm going to put some out. And then the iridescent bronze. And our iridescent gold deep. Again, these are great for airbrushing, calligraphy, mixed media artists, um, staining wood or paper, uh, water media like effects. Here's the bronze, gorgeous on that dark surface. And then we have the iridescent gold deep. And show those on the black. If I tilt those up, you can kind of really see the flash of those iridescent colors. And they are a nice companion to our iridescent copper, silver, and pearl that we already have. So that is the iridescent colors. And now we're going to take a look at our interference colors. Looks like we have a couple of questions. Hi, Kevin. Um, before you jump into interference colors, I want to let viewers know that if you're joining us late or you have to leave early, no worries, because this event will be recorded and you can watch it on Facebook or YouTube at your convenience. Um, and I did have a question from a viewer wondering whether or not you can use high flow with mediums. Yes, so um, you can mix the high flow just like you would a fluid or a heavy body with our mediums, gels, and paste. And in fact, I have a couple of boards uh, towards the end that I'm going to show you how to do that. So yes, definitely they are mixable. Um, the good thing about the high flow colors is they are mixable across all the lines. So you can mix high flow with heavy body. You can mix uh, high flow with fluid. You can mix high flow with so flat even if you wanted to. Just know that by mixing those together, it will change either the viscosity or the sheen of the paint that you're mixing it with. All right, so let's take a look at the interference colors. So the interference gold and interference blue fine. Again, those little black bars on there um, give you an indication of its transparency or its opacity. Compare that to maybe something like the naphtha pink, which you can see is much more opaque than the interference colors. And the interference colors uh, give a nice read, depending on how that light kind of rakes across the surface. So let's brush those out. The one thing uh, to know, this is the interference blue. When we brush that out, 
Um, they are kind of milky white when wet. And of course, when they dry, you get this beautiful color. Again, the interference colors can also be used in uh, the airbrush um, tools as well as the refillable markers and pens. Here is the interference gold. Slightly milky white when wet, but when we brush those out and, whoop, well that's a defective brush. <laughs> Um, brush that out. Uh, again, that milky white will go away and you'll be left just with the interference color. That milky white is a binder. Of course, as it dries, it becomes more and more transparent. So that is our two new interference colors, interference gold fine and interference blue fine. So as I said, 37 new colors in total. We're not going to brush all of them out, but we'll give you a, a good sampling of a lot. Next up, we have our um, historic hues. So India yellow. Uh, Prussian blue hue and our viridian green hue. So here's the viridian green, the Prussian blue hue, and our Indian yellow hue. So we're going to just brush some of those out. Again, you've got an idea of the transparency there based on the little color swatch that's painted over those black bars. This is the Indian yellow. The Viridian Green Hue, and then the Prussian Blue Hue. Uh, the one thing I'll point out too is you could use, I'm doing these kind of straight right out of the bottle, but you can mix these. Um, you can let them down with a little bit of water. Um, I also, towards the end, will go over using the uh, high flow medium as well. And this is the green green. And of course, these are all mixable with each other. And our Indian yellow, India yellow hue. So I can mix a little bit of this. So they're very mixable, just like any other paint line that we have. You can mix them together, and you can combine them with either the heavy body, the fluid, or even so flat or open. Just know that by mixing, you'll change the viscosity of each of those lines and or the drying time. So those are our historic hues, three of those colors. Next up, we'll take a look at another trio of colors, and those are our primaries. We have a primary cyan, a primary magenta, and a primary yellow. And here we have the yellow, primary yellow, the primary magenta, and our primary cyan. I'm going to brush these out. Again, on the top is the dry, and on the bottom is the wet. A little bit of a color shift there. And then this is the cyan. And again, as I did on the other one, you can mix these 
and get variation in color just like you can a, any acrylic color. So those are our primary trio, three colors. Any questions there? I'm curious to know which colors people are most excited about. And if you want to drop those at the chat, I'm just oh, that would really be nice. anxious to see yeah. if anybody is excited my, about uh, colors My favorites, of course, are the iridescent and interference. Um, so with that, um, those three primaries, I have an airbrush example that we've done. Um, this is using the three primary colors, being the cy uh, primary cyan, the primary yellow, and the pri primary magenta. So those three colors, airbrushing them, you can see we can get our secondary values by just layering those colors on top of each other. So that is our primary trio, three of the 37. All right, so let's take a look at the next group of colors, and that's a big group. Yes, we have a question. I do have a question. Can you talk a little bit about the sheen of different colors? Yes, so all, all of the um, opacity and sheen for each of those colors is a little bit different. And that difference is accounted for by the pigments that we're using. So whether they're a mineral or a modern, whether we're digging that pigment out of the earth or we're manufacturing that pigment color, uh, adding that to the binder affects the pigment and creates the varying sheens as well as opacity through transparency. And you'll see that a little bit in these color swatches here. So uh, here we have a total of 14 new colors. Um, we can kind of run through those. We have the um, burnt umber. We have a chromium oxide green. A cobalt blue, and then uh, cobalt turquoise. And so you'll see, talking about that pigment, a little bit of the difference in opacity again over those black lines, as well as the sheen. Down here towards the bottom, I have the diox purple, which looks almost black. I'll put a little drop out, and if I let this down with a little bit of water, you can really see that beautiful kind of purple undertone there. So that is the diox purple. Next up, we have the carbon black, or excuse me, Mars black. Got my colors mixed up here, so Mars black at the top. And then we have another magenta. This is the magenta uh, medium, medium magenta. A uh, Payne's gray. And then a phthalo blue red shade. This is the same phthalo blue red shade that I used in that comparison between the high flow and the fluid. We have a pyrrole red. So a lot of you are familiar with our fluid pyrrole red. So here is the pyrrole red now in high flow. Next up is the yellow ochre. And you can see between the pyrrole red, this one, a pigment that's manufactured, you can kind of see um, it's shiny. The same with the phthalo there compared to the yellow ochre, um, which is a little more dull and a little more transparent. So yellow ochre. And then we added another neutral gray. This is the neutral gray number eight. Naphthal red medium. And the phthalo green yellow shade, 
So thalo green, yellow shade. And of course, you may not remember all of these colors. You can always go to our website and look at that color chart to remember all of these. This is the uh, 37 today that we're talking about, but you can see the whole lineup there of all of the high flow colors, the 37 new ones. All right, so let's talk a little bit about mixing. So we had a question earlier about um, the ability of mixing the high flow with different mediums. So we have a couple here. We have some questions too. Yes, we have a question about when people can get these colors. Um, so the high flow expansion colors are shipping now to retailers. There are some retailers that have them available online, um, and there are some that already have them in stores on their shelves, and they will be coming. So if they're not at your local art store or online with the retailer you usually purchase from, you should be able to find them in the next week to a couple of months. Um, internationally, they'll be a little delayed getting there, um, but if you have questions, you can get in touch with our customer service department and they can give you more information about when and where you can get them. Thank you, yes, you can always email or call. Uh, if your local retailer doesn't have them on the shelf now, they'll have them shortly. Um, so hopefully you'll be able to get your hands on those. All right, so in terms of mixing, we're um, just like our fluids and heavy bodies, you can mix these with um, gels or paste. Um, so here I put out a little light molding paste. Now this is already dry, and I use the naphthal pink and I mixed it into the light molding paste. And you can see this is dry too. And so I'll just do a little quick wet mix right next to that. So light molding paste. And this could be any gel or paste. And we'll put a little bit of the naphthal pink in there. And I'm just putting one little drop kind of and we'll just fold that in and mix that with that light molding paste. And you'll want to take the time, thoroughly mix that, or you might kind of like the variation in color by not thoroughly mixing. But you can see that shift in color as it dries. Um, some of that is from that milky white um, nature of the binder as it dries and it clarifies. So the wet, versus dry, but yes, mixing with any medium um, or gel. And we can do another little example I have. This is our hard molding paste. And then the uh, amount that you put in here is kind of up to you. There's no real secret uh, formula there. Um, I'm using the light ultramarine blue, and I'm going to add that to the paste, and we'll fold that in. And again, um, kind of a pastel milky color and as it dries um, that um, milky white nature will go away. So yes, all of the high flow colors can be mixed with a gel or a paste, any of those mediums, and you can mix them with other acrylic colors or a heavy body or our fluids. So to answer that question earlier, yes, definitely you can mix. And then I have a variety just to kind of show you a couple of different surfaces. We have a uh, light molding paste. We have our fiber paste. We have our glass bead. And we have a pumice. Let me try and center that for you. And we'll just use, uh, maybe we'll use our primary magenta. And I'm just going to dampen the surface a little bit and show you what that looks like. And so all of these varying uh, degrees 
of uh, acceptance there. And of course, I can let that down with a little bit more water. And you get some really nice effects on these different materials. Again, this is our uh, coarse pumice, um, our glass bead gel, our fiber paste, and our light molding paste. And we'll use the primary cyan. And this one, I'm not going to use any water. I'm just going to apply it directly. And then we'll brush that out. So you can use this on any gel or paste. You can mix it with any gel or paste. You can mix it with our heavy body or our fluids or any other acrylic color. And you can even use it as an underpainting if you just wanted to do a little sketch. Um, we have refillable markers. So the, these markers, um, you can buy a variety of empty markers and you can uh, fill those with the high flow color. And then you have a marker with that high flow color in. And I believe this is the phthalo red shade that we put in there. Again, so you can use refillable markers or pens. And I just thought I'd also take the time to show you using the um, high flow medium. Again, I'll stick with the uh, primary magenta. So if I did a little wash, just using a damp brush, I can kind of do a little letdown. If I use the same color, and I'll use, in this case, the high flow medium. So the high flow medium thins and extends your acrylics. You could use this as well with a fluid. Maybe I was being a little stingy there, but I can extend that color and thin that out. So lots of versatility and options there. This is our high flow medium. And you can see wash here and uh, doing a little thinning and extending with the high flow medium. And then I saved kind of my favorite colors or some fun colors for the end. And I think we have a little video we're going to show you. So these are our, our, the three new fluorescent colors. And you can see them under the black light there. So here we have our three colors, and I just painted these out on a black surface. This is the fluorescent magenta. The one in the middle is the fluorescent orange yellow. And the one on the end is the fluorescent violet. And let's pop the uh, black light on there, see what those look like. So you get a little fluorescing. We have the other lights on, so it may not be as dramatic. Let's turn that off. There you go. You can see the difference. Maybe one more time. So fluorescent without the black light. Um, I'll just quick brush those out, and then I'll show you a couple little options. Again, with the markers. And we'll do the black light one more time, just because it's fun. <laughs> So this is the uh, fluorescent uh, magenta I'm brushing out first. And then the fluorescent uh, orange there. And let's do the fluorescent violet. 
on the black. So that's wet and dry. So let's try that with the fluorescent light and maybe I'll just sh give that a little tweak without the light and with the light. So you get a little fluorescing there. Um, the nice thing with all of the high flow colors, regardless of fluorescent or not fluorescent, as, as I said, you can use them in refillable markers. So that's what we've done here. I used the fluorescent pink and the fluorescent um, violet, or excuse me, the fluorescent magenta and the flu uh, fluorescent violet in the refillable markers. And these are just empty markers. Um, you, there's a number of different manufacturers. You just have to do a little research, find out which ones you like. They come in a variety of sizes. This just uh, comes off. Inside you have your little beads and you just take your color Again, here, this is the fluorescent magenta. You squeeze that color in there, and then you just put your marker top back on. And um, some of these you have to press to activate to get that color to flow. And I've already done that in this marker here. And um, there are different tools. This one um, is a very fine line. It has a fine needle on there. And I've done the um, fluorescent orange yellow in this one. So we'll move that kind of out of the way. And you can see you can get a really thin line with some of these tools. And that looks pretty cool under the fluorescent light. Um, and in here is the marker with the uh, fluorescent magenta. Without the black light and with the black light. So if you're not familiar with our um, high flow acrylics, uh, know that you can use them like painting for any of the acrylics, just like any of the other acrylics. You can use them in refillable markers and pens uh, for calligraphy artists. Uh, you can use it for staining. Here we've stained a wood veneer. You can use it like a watercolor. Just know that it is acrylic, so it is bonded to that surface and won't lift when activated with water. And fabric applications, of course. 37 new colors added to the lineup. There we go. There's the 37 new colors. Um, all the light fastness rating and opacity is all on there as well. So go to our website, check those out. Let's check in and see if we have any last questions before we close. We had a question about what sizes these products, these new colors ah, come in. So lots of different sizes. Um, I happen to have three of those here. We have um, the one ounce fluids. We have the four ounce fluid. And we have the 16. High flow. High flow. High flow. I'm sorry, what did I say? <laughs> um, I said uh, fluid. Sorry about that, technical. Uh, high flow. So we a uh, variety of sizes for the high flow. Uh, I think because I'm saying fluid ounces, sorry there. Um, so one fluid ounce, we have the four and the 16, so a variety of sizes. Um, those high flows are available in a variety of sizes. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, make sure you uh, email us, help at goldenpaint.com, um, or you can email us. If you didn't get your question answered in the chat, definitely give us, get in touch and we can um, answer your question. Any last questions? No, thank you everyone for joining us and uh, we can't wait to see what you make with these new colors. Thank you.